Hi there, and welcome to everybody that's watching the live Wednesday wa uh, warm up on the This Is Ibrox platforms. Today, I'm joined by Ross Chalmers. How are you today, Ross? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Kyle. It's good to be back. It's my first podcast in, in quite a while. So, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to the season, and it's good to be back in This Is Ibrox. Yeah, I know you've certainly got a few things to, to tell us what you've been up to the last couple of days. Well, I'm looking forward to that, as I'm sure everybody else is. And Shug, you're stuck on with me again. A bit of a, a late substitution, as you referred to in your tweet, but glad to have you on, as always, my man. Uh, it's uh, been a whole one week since my last <laughs> podcast. Uh, but no, absolutely delighted to be here. And we're a week closer to the season, so excited. That's uh, I remember you saying that last week, and that, that's how I'm just counting down. Um, counting it off in the number of pods that we're doing until until we've got to got to start the season. Um, but as always, there's loads to talk about. Um, we'll be predominantly talking about Jack Butlin's comments um, to the media yesterday. Um, I said our very own Ross and Ross and Kieran were there over at Rock and Howie, which is which is interesting. You know, really glad to be a part of that, and, and we'll get um, Ross's uh, thoughts and his experience and, and what happened there. Um, We've also uh, got the upcoming friendlies. We'll talk about that. Obviously, it was around yesterday that we will be playing Olympiacos. We'll get the guys' thoughts on what they think of pre-season friendlies. Are they happy with the level of opponents? Is there much to, to talk about in terms of that? We'll discuss some of the, the Saudi chat. Uh, I know that there's a, a certain rumour that uh, from a certain player from from uh, Aberdeen way um, that, that wasn't given much credence to, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, seeing as that one of our former managers has been rumoured to be in and about and perhaps raiding some some members of the squad. Um, we will discuss um, the guys' thoughts in the pre-season videos and, and where the new signings fit in. Um, but as always, if you guys in the comments got any questions, anything to ask, anything you want us to discuss, uh, fire them in the comments. We'll get up and we will uh, do our best to answer the questions. As I said, the more on the spot Ross and Shug are put, the better the question and the more likely I am to ask it. So, so fire away. Um, firstly, as everybody knows, um, regular viewers of the uh, Wednesday warm-up will know that I like doing a wee on this day. Ross, I'll come to you first on this one. Um, well, what I'll do is I'll give the, the account that I get a lot of these a shout-out first because it's it's only the, the fair that we do it. It's at WTP72RFC. Um, so go check out. There's always loads of good information on there. I love that Twitter as well. Um, but on this day in 2001, or 2021, sorry, Rangers announced the signing of John Lundstrom on a free from Sheffield United. He's gone on to, and this really surprised me, he's already made 100 appearances for the, for the club, which I was stunned about in two seasons. He scored nine goals, Ross. I know it one's my favourite, but genuinely, what have you made of, of John Lundstrom's time at the at the club so far? And I, I know he splits some supporters' opinions, um, as many of the players do, I suppose. Well, I think it's fair to say he's had, he has his um, ups and downs, John Lundstrom at Rangers. It was actually a signing I was quite happy about at the time. I think he was linked in the January before, and uh, there were strong rumours at that point. I think there was... A lot of talk about him not renewing his contract with Sheffield United because of our interest. So it, it was a player I'd looked at for maybe like three or four months. And I could understand the move in terms of the profile. Uh, came across as a bit of a, a bit of a leader for Sheffield United. I think that was something we were kind of missing at the time. So, yeah, I, I mean, I like the signing. I think it's fair to say he didn't start very well. And yeah. uh, I always remember that that game against Alish Kert where he got that second booking. Yep. And I think... I think we have to be honest. I think a lot of Rangers fans wrote him off that night and felt he's not got a chance here with that. That that's yep. just not good enough. Of course, it took a wee bit of time to settle. And I remember getting to the January and everyone was like, Oh, if we get a bid for John Lundstrom, it's you know, we'll let him go. We can reinvest that. But he just came onto a game in the second half of that season. Uh really unbelievable in the European run. Of course, that goal you're talking about against Leipzig. Well, I don't think I'll ever forget that atmosphere at, at Ibrox that night. It was it was truly unbelievable. So yeah, ups and downs for John Lundstrom. I think he maybe recovered a wee bit towards the end of last season there. I think the last four or five games, he started to maybe show a bit of his level again. So I actually think he might be quite an important player under Michael Beale. Maybe that's a bit of a yeah. controversial take, but I just I think there's maybe more to come from, from John Lundstrom. And I think overall you can say it's been a, a good bit of business from Rangers. Yeah, I, I agree largely uh, with you on that one. They said that it'll be interesting to see where he, where he fits into the squad next year, especially... With uh, I think Raskin's maybe kind of the similar type of player to him, and for me, Raskin is, is a better player than what Lundstrom is. But I always remember, like you said, it was that Alish Kirk game, Dennett on on the car and on the way home, and a fellow fellow Podder Craig on on this network was 
nah, not for me. And I just kept saying, listen, they'll, they'll be fine. I think he's, there's a player in there. And, and, and thankfully, that they had a very good good six months to the end of that season. But his form last season was a bit up and down. But he's here next season and, and let's see what, what he can do. Um, Shug, I don't know if I actually mentioned this in my agenda. So this might be a bit of a surprise <laughs> if it's on this day. But I'm sure you'll have thoughts on it nonetheless. Um, but the next on this day was on the 4th of July. Um, it was the opening of Murray Park, as it was referred to then. From here on, we'll be calling it Auchin Howie. Um, it was opened in 2001. It cost £14 million to build and is still one of the state-of-the-art training facilities in the whole of Europe. We know that players that come often cite how good it is. Um, it has got a gym, a pool, eight outdoor pitches, state-of-the-art indoor football pitch, medical suite and a video analysis suite. How important is Auckland Howie been to to a club like Rangers? And it's things like this that separate us from from other clubs. I think. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, I think we definitely we led the way uh, on that front. Uh, I remember back at the time when they're talking about building it, and the advocate came in, and it was all the Dutch were going down that route and everything. And it was. I think I'm sure I remember when the primarily built that they were looking purely towards the youth in the future and that was yeah. what it was going to be great for and everything. But they kind of forgot that it's actually great for the players in the first team. Uh, it's no surprise that we see other clubs within Scotland trying to catch up with us uh, after we built it first. Uh, <laughs> and you see, you see every big club in England, um, them ridiculous amount of money they're spending on training grounds and things like that you can so you know how important having your own training ground and your own base is yeah somewhere for the players to train the first team pitch is sealed off so we can train in private without any spying eyes or anything no way uh, marcello bielsa's hanging about with uh, <laughs> binoculars at Murray Park, or at Okinawi, yeah, but yeah, uh, I'm glad we dropped the Murray Park bit and the Rangers training centre, or the Hummel training centre, and every other name, I think we'll just stick with Okinawi. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see if if, if Rangers uh, exploit that commercial opportunity in the future, because I don't think too many people will be bothered if, if, the, if the training grounds uh, got a name, but it'll be interesting to see if anybody anybody takes that up, because I, I know our new uh, CEO, I think that's certainly something. <laughs> he's, we know he's good at maximising revenue, so I think that's a, a bit of an open goal. Um, I was going to say, speaking of open goals, but that's definitely not a good segue into this the, the first thing we'll be talking about. But Ross, we'll begin by talking about the, the Jack Butland interview from, from yesterday. I know that, that you attended Auckland Howie with, with Kieran from, from This Is Ibrox. Um Just maybe not talk about what, what Butland said, but just talk about your, your experience of the day, how it went and 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 how good it was for, for This Is Ibrox to be in attendance at, at, at something like this. Yeah, I think it's... Um... First and foremost, for a start, I think is that yeah, it's a privilege to be able to ask to go along to the, the Rangers training centre, and um, before I discuss that, all of that is because of everyone watching and engaging with the podcast and everyone enjoying it. So we've been able to to bring some more content um, through our channels, but of course, that a big thank goes out to everyone that that watches and engages with us. So I'll start with that. In terms of the day itself, yeah, really interesting being able to go to the training centre and get a real feel around the club at this point because pre-season's very interesting I think for the fans it's you just want the games to start and you're really just looking for time to move on as quickly as possible but for professional footballers it's such an important it's arguably the most important part of the season preparing mm -hmm. and ensuring that the, the the squad is at the right fitness levels to continue throughout and really maximize the output so it was mm -hmm. good to be in around it and really interesting to see and, and, and hear from some of the players yesterday. That a, a few of the new signings were speaking to us and there is a real positivity. Uh, and, I, and it looks like a lot of the new signings have settled in really, really well. The, I, I really got a good feel from all of them. Jack Butland, of course, we've seen the the interview from, come out from Jack Butland yesterday. Really, really well-spoken individual. Um, really, really media trained, as you would probably expect playing at that level that he has, you know, appearing for England, Manchester United, Crystal Palace, you know, he's played at such a high level already that that's to be expected, but he was, he was, he was genuine at the same time Like you could feel his personality and you could definitely feel he is coming here with a point to prove, which I think is really good for us. And um, especially for a guy at, at his stage of career, the way it's went in the last couple of years, it's been quite difficult for him. 
but you could really get a sense from him that he really, really wanted to come up here and deliver. And he understands the expectations. And, you know, referencing kind of Andy Gorham and Alan McGregor, he understands how important that goalkeeper role is for Rangers as a club, the fan base. We always look at the goalkeeper as being such a an important area for us. We've all, always relied on a, a really good goalkeeper, as I suppose most teams would want to. So, mm-hmm. yeah, really good, really good experience. Um, really privileged to be up there, like I said. And as an like I said, again, you can really feel the positivity in and around the club at the moment. And I, and I think that, well, I'm hoping that means we're going to have a really good season. <laughs> yeah, that, likewise, I said, I, I, I totally agree with you there in terms of the, the Butland interview. Just, you know, overall, he did seem really positive. And it does seem like there's a lot of positivity coming from the, from the club, despite having a disappointing season last year, which is not, I don't want to say it's unusual, but it's, it's it's good to see that. Um, Shug, uh, uh, Ross sort of alluded to it a wee bit there, but b- before we get into the meat about what, what Butland actually said, um, he's clearly been media trained. He's played for, for big clubs. He's played in the Premier League. He's had experience with England. How impressed were, have you been with his with his professionalism and even some of the small snippets that we've, we've seen in training so far, like the way he's interacting with the, with the young. There was a really interesting, again, we will, we will come on to the training sessions later on, but there was a really interesting goalie drill that was doing. I don't know if you, you saw that one, but it was good to see him, you know, sort of talking to the younger players, see him talking to, to Bud, who's obviously in the, the B-team goalkeeper. Um, how important it is to have a guy like that on board that, that is very professional like that? Yeah, we've we've just lost one of our most professional goalkeepers in history, I think. Oh my god, that was something that you didn't obviously strike straight away with him eh, with all these shenanigans throughout the years. But <laughs> the all our pallets and everything, he was the most professional, the trainers and things like that. So I think they're big gloves to fill. So Jack Butlin's coming to our club with, like you say, experience at England experience at top clubs in England, Man United being the latest one, he's going to have worked with some of the best goalkeeping coaches around. He's going to bring ideas and things in that I'm sure Colin Stewart will be getting ingrained in him and trying to get some new info and try to get some new ideas out of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yes, somebody, I mean, we don't very often sign in England at the Nationals. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. he's still got aspirations to get back into the England score at some point because he's still, in terms of a goalkeeper, he's still relatively young. Yeah, I'm sure it's something that he will have on his mind, but in order to do that, he's going to have to come up here and play out of his skin. And I believe he can do that. I'm excited by him. It's We're talking about McGregor and we're talking about McGregor and Gorm. The one thing he's got in them two already is height. Uh, yeah. He's considerably taller than they two were, so it'll be good to see a commanding set of gloves within our own box, and hopefully that's going to take away from the goals and crosses and things like that. So, yeah, no, I'm really encouraged by Jack Butland and the way he's speaking and the way he's come in and the manner he's went about his business. Yeah, it's, I'll stick with you, Shug, because you, you touched on, on a point there, Um I said uh, he did. He talked about continuing the footsteps of of previous Rangers goalkeeper. The exact um, quote was, uh, "That's the plan." You talk about the two goalkeepers and two guys who have got an incredible history with the club. Uh, that new Rangers, that knew what Rangers is about, and watching the memorial piece for Andy Gorham the other day, it painted a picture of what he was like and what he meant to the club and what the club meant to him. That is what this club is all about. It's got a rich history of goalkeepers, and that is something that I will be looking to continue both on and off the pitch. This quote, like, it, it really, really impressed me, this quote, because I don't want to say, like, sometimes players come in and they don't get it, but but he really seems to, to get it by, by obviously quoting those guys and, and understand it. I mean, how much pressure is Butland actually under, given that, I mean, it, even in my lifetime, Rangers have had a... a a plethora of really, really good goalkeepers. You, you go back to Woods, you know, former England international. He was a full England international at the time playing for Rangers. Gorham, Kloss and, and McGregor. Um, how much pressure is he going to be under, given that the guys that he's following in the footsteps of? Yeah, it's it's massive. It's something that, that you see, I'm the same sort of, I thought was older than you, but Chris Woods was my earliest goalkeeping mm-hmm. memory. And we've had some big names and Goalkeepers that aren't making it at Rangers get called out very quickly. Yes. Yeah. 
that's no that's no way uh, even Al McGregor for everything he's done for the club over the years even last season it was as if he was a villain or something the way some fans were treating him just because he wasn't as good as what he'd previously been uh, so he's going to have to come up here and it's going to have to deliver in big games uh, that's what we expect that's what we expect all our players to be fair but the goalkeepers that isolated position we are any mistakes or times 100 to what an outfield player's mistake is. Uh, so he's got confidence. And I think that's one of the things that you need to be the Rangers goalkeeper is confidence. And yeah, if you can match some of the names, Stephen Close, another one that springs to mind and things. So yeah, and well, at the other end of the scale, it was Kami Bell, I think, was the last really bad one we had. Uh, yeah. And he would get chased out after his <laughs> mistake after mistake. Uh, I think that was before Fordringham came in. And Fordringham, for all, he wasn't great, but he wasn't a bad goalkeeper. But he still wasn't considered Rangers standard. So I think we've got we've got high expectations of our Rangers number one, and hopefully Jack Butland can live up to them. Yeah, as you said, the right expectation, and and that is exactly what it, it's it's the way it should be at Rangers. Every player should have expectations on them, but. The key thing with that is I think he's a guy that's going to be able to to handle that pressure and, and handle that confidence because, as we said, he's, he's got experience in the, the Premier League and, uh, OK, he's not played in a World Cup, but you're not a rubbish goalkeeper if you're you're on the bench for, for England at a World Cup. Uh, Ross, the next question um, that he was asked, well, uh, obviously it was well documented that he had a big money offer from, from Man United um, to, to stay at the club. Again, albeit it will be on the bench largely in a supporting role because you know that they've got De Gea and there's rumours about them signing um, as a Onana. Um, where's De Gea from? Is it Inter Milan or Ajax that he's from? Just Inter Milan, Milan, yeah. There you go. There's me pretending I know about other clubs other than Rangers there for everybody watching. Um, but the quote that he said on that, he said, it wasn't a difficult decision really for me. Um, joining Man United was a great opportunity to join the club I supported as a kid, to learn from the best and things like that. But you quickly get to the point where you realise just how much you miss playing yourself and how much you miss that winning feeling. It's great when other people are doing it and you're part of it. But for me, Rangers have always sort of been there for a few years. It's never got quite to the point where I had a decision to make. And this summer, it sort of got to that point. It wasn't a difficult decision to make an incredible club to join and history ultimately to be successful. This is the club's goal every year. It is to be successful and to win. And that is an exciting place to be as a player and hopefully we can do that. Um, what does it say uh, about uh, the fact that a goalkeeper has <laughs> turned down Man United to, to, to come and, and join Rangers? And, and do you think that he will he said he'll, he'll meet those expectations? And, and, and yeah, and how, how do you think he'll cope? I mean, it, sh it certainly shows his character, doesn't it? If you're being offered, you know, speculating 50, 60 grand to stay at Manchester United, of course, only as a backup. And although there's the big homegrown problem down there in England where they always need to they, they try and get a third goalkeeper that, that fits a homegrown quota. So that's why they're, they come at a premium, really, and they're willing to pay silly money to keep them. So for him to turn that down, and even with that, that's his boyhood team. So that's a really, really difficult decision to make. I'm sure if all of us were in that situation when it came to Rangers, we would all find it very difficult to, to move on. So I think that shows his character, determination to, to get back to the level he, he was at before because there's certainly ability in there. There's certainly a good goalkeeper. He's went through a bit of a rough time, mm -hmm. made some pretty poor errors in, in big games, and he's just lost his confidence, I think. And he's been willing to maybe sit in the sidelines for a few years and you know maybe make some money. That's it. And sometimes it comes down to that, but now he's yeah. he's looking at it and and he wants to really rejuvenate his career and he thinks Rangers are the best place to do it. And you, you could get a real feel from him yesterday that it did turn out to be a bit of an easy decision for him. I thought it was interesting that he'd referenced Rangers maybe not being interested, but there was talks of it the last couple of years and he never felt that it was close enough to really pay too much attention to it. But clearly we've been a club that's been on his radar for a while. He's maybe felt this would be a good place for him to come and you know, take his career to another level again. So, yeah, listen, I, I was really impressed by him yesterday. Just that he's got a bit of an aura about him. I'll be honest, like sitting in the same room as him, you can feel it. So I think he's going to be a commanding figure for us. I'm hoping that mm -hmm. we're going to see... I, I think we struggled towards the end with Al McGregor. I, th I, I think he, 
his inability to command his box really hurt us sometimes. I think we've seen that in the last game at home against Hearts. Just we've just struggled. He's just struggled in that aspect for the last couple of years. And I think we've got a goalkeeper now that should be able to command his area better and hopefully can really take us to another level and can really just hope sorry, can really help Michael Beale kind of put his print on this team again, change the tactical style. You know, he's a bit more of a modern goalkeeper, the best way to describe it, right? So yeah, I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. Um I definitely felt yesterday that Jack Bolton's really looking forward to it as well. Looks like a guy that is absolutely relishing this and, and he's ready to go and he's talking about the Champions League qualifiers and how important they are. So he's bought into everything early and, and I think that's really good for us going forward. Yeah, that's that's it exactly. I've got I've got one final question uh, on on Jack Butland for for you, Shug, before we move on to the next topic. But as Ross sort of alluded to there in that interview, he did reference you know the Champions League appeal, um, and he's targeted obviously us getting to the group stages of the competition again. Um, hope, hopefully, if we do get there, we have a better season than, than what we did last year. But on that, he says it's massive. Um, European football, I've heard about the European nights at Ibrox, who hasn't at this stage let's face it, it goes without saying it's an important part of the club, they have had some great moments over the years in Europe and we are looking to continue that and we have got an opportunity to do that that was certainly a massive point for me it's sort of guaranteed either way but that's not the focus to rely on that we want to get to the Champions League I mean, it's been a wee while I feel that that, that we've had players joining us that have said, you know, it's, it's the fact that Rangers are good in Europe. I mean, over the last four or five years in the Europa League, I think we have been very, very good. Obviously, it's well documented we got to Seville and stuff like that. Putting a slightly, not not negative, but just a different angle on it, is it a concern for you that, that Butland, to my knowledge, has got has never played in a, in a European game? He's, he's, I think he's got a, a few internationals for England, but is that a... Is it a concern this, or, or do you think that, as Ross alluded to, the positivity, the stature of the guy, he's played in the Premier League, is it a worry? No, I'm not concerned at all. I, well, to be fair, McGregor had played in the Champions League before I, last time round, but none of the other Rangers players had played in the Champions League before last season, I, to my knowledge, off the top of my head. I, to be fair, they didn't really play very well. I don't know if that's maybe what's giving you the fear, uh, the fact that most of us are Aye. Uh, but no, I think goalkeepers are they're just uh, the best goalkeepers. It doesn't matter if it's Champions League, if it's Scottish Cup, if it's the SPL. I think they just produce all the time. Uh, and using Alan McGregor as an example, some of his biggest saves and biggest nights came in European games. Uh, some of his greatest saves when we think of Prague and Bremen and things like that, they're the ones that sort of stick with you. So, I mean, in Scotland, he's going to have four big games next season domestically and then maybe two in the Cup uh, if we draw them. Other than that, Champions League, even Europa League, if we were to end up there, are huge nights. And I'm sure he's seen the footage and I'm sure he's uh, well versed in it. Uh, how good our atmosphere Ibrox is and yeah. I'm, I'm certain that that has been one of the draws and I'm sure that the confident keeper that he'll be that he'll exceed in that environment and I love having a player coming in saying that's what he wants he's not coming in saying I'm looking forward to the European nights he's looking forward to Champions League nights so uh, let's hope he's right and he gets to enjoy it come September Yeah that's it exactly it is for what it's worth, I think he'll, I think he'll be all right as well in that environment. He's played in some some big games. He's been in and around a big club and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully it's a hopefully it's a sage that he can excel on. And I noticed in the comments there, somebody asked how old he was, and and the reply was that he's he's 30 years old, which means he's probably got about another 10, 12 years of of playing football. So so there you go. Um, right, Ross. The next um talking point of the podcast is as Rangers announced the final preseason friendly at Ibrox, we will be playing Olympia. Akos on Wednesday the 26th of July at 7.45. That's certainly a game I think I'll try and get along to if I'm not on podcasting duties <laughs> that night. But um, what have you made of uh, the, the pre-season friendly that we've announced so far? Obviously we've got the Newcastle game that was announced pretty early for, for Al McGregor's testimonial. Hamburg, which I know the fans have been crying out for, for for a while and obviously we're playing Hoffenheim away 
um, at the end of this month as well. Where do you stand in pre-season friendlies? Is it a thing that we've just got to do? And are you happy with the kind of calibre of opponent that, that we've lined up this year? Yeah, I, I don't really take a lot of interest in the pre-season friendlies, to be honest with you. I, I, no. Even the opponent, to be honest. I, I know a couple of seasons ago we played Real Madrid and things like that, and there was a big furore about it. But even I wasn't too bothered, to be honest. That For me... Pre-season is pre-season. It's all about fitness for the players, getting as many minutes in the legs as possible and trying to go into the season with the, the best possible chance of being successful. So, yeah, I don't really look too much into the, to the level of opponent, to be honest. I think you're wanting, you know, a high a high level as possible, I suppose. Um, but I don't think it's absolutely crucial. I think just what's more important is trying to blend any new signings in, trying to get as much fitness in the legs as possible, maybe trying to help a few players that struggled last season with minutes and trying to get them minutes in pre-season when the, so when the league comes around they're not kind of thrown in it with the cold so yeah <laughs> look I wish I could stand here and say I'm absolutely buzzing we're going to be playing Olympiacos but I, I do, I'll, I'll be brutally honest with you I'm, I don't really have any emotion over it I think it's just as long as as long as we can see these players blending and we can start to see a, a real tactical style happening between the players and that that's where I'm going to get the confidence but yeah, in terms of the level of opponent, Kyle, I'm not too bothered. No, that's that's a fair comment. Is that there's been a couple of things here. Chris McFarlane says we'll probably have to wait until our second friendly to see Butland play. McGregor will be back to play against Newcastle, which, by the way, I can't, I can't, I can't wait to see McGregor in that game. Uh, I think it'll be very, very interesting to see what what state he turns up in because I, I, if I was in, in his shoes, I'd have fully, fully down <laughs> tools by now and be enjoying my 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 retirement um but uh yeah shug sort of similar question for you what's your thoughts on the friendlies like i i, I don't mind a wee pre-season friendly it used to be in, in years gone by when when craig and myself didn't have uh season tickets we used to that was the games that we used to always we used to go to like the two three pre-season friendlies been to some stinkers been to some good games but um I, I will always mention this whenever i have a chance to talk about it in the pre-season friendly i guess i think it was uh berry we played when when umar sadiq had that that amazing <laughs> run from the from the halfway line but um shug what was your thoughts in, on, on pre-season friendlies and stuff like that as well yeah i think they're, they're a money maker i guess for the club uh, as well as being something the players need to go up to full fitness, uh, get much fitness. So I think it works both ways. Uh, personally, I like going along just so I can see if anything new has happened to Ibrox, uh, see if there's a new fresh coat of paint somewhere or something, uh, just to get back along, see if there's a new pie or something in the pie stalls or something, just to see what's different. And it always feels like you've not been there for like, years and it's only literally been like six weeks or something yeah uh, but yeah i'm i'm going to the mcgregor game and i'm going to the hamburg game i won't be going to the olympiacos course game uh, i think robert robertson asked earlier where my accent comes from uh, i can say it comes from stranor and i won't be traveling up midweek to watch olympiacos uh, it's not one that i fancy a late trip home so but I will go and honour Paul McGregor and I look forward to seeing Hamburg here uh, because what happens in Hamburg stays in Hamburg. <laughs> I know. That, that's that exactly. It is. Are you telling me that it's, I always thought it was Annan you were from, eh? Yeah, that's what you thought, but <laughs> not. <laughs> it's definitely Stranraw. It's definitely Stranraw. Definitely yeah. not Hamburg. Yeah, there we go. But listen, it could be, you never know. Um, Ross, I'll come on to you in the, in the next week discussion point that we've got here. Maybe, maybe a wee bit tongue-in-cheek, but it's it's definitely worthwhile talking about, seeing as it's been all over social media. Um, it's been well documented that Stephen Gerrard has been appointed the manager at El Al Etifak. I think that's how you say that. Um, and he's been rumoured to be sniffing about a few of his ex-players that he had at Rangers, Ross. There's a couple, Tav, I can, I, I can see, uh, Glenn Kamara is another one who's been rumoured to be sniffing out about. I know there was a pretty tenuous link in, in social media last night to um, uh, Scott Wright, which was kind of poo-pooed. Um, but <sighs> it's not more of a question if, I mean, because the answer is obviously if if the money is right and correct, that the, I don't think the club would be hesitating to to send guys like this over. But if we're, if we're taking those three, I, from my point of view, I'd, I'd be happy with letting Scott Wright go, happy with Glenn Kamara. 
have, I'm not too sure on. Where, where, where do you stand on that? And would it take a ridiculous offer from from somewhere like that for us to have to offload Tav? Yeah, I think so. I think the way I always think about James Tavernier is, I think how highly we value the player is not the same value that other clubs will have. So, for example, Rangers might value him at 10 plus million, but I don't see any other club valuing James Tavernier of that value considering his age and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I think it would have to take a, a pretty extraordinary offer for, for Rangers to be open about it. I'm, it. It would have to go above 10 million, I think. I think it would need to be between 10 and 50 million for the club to consider it. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but <laughs> ultimately that's what you would push for. I think if it ever got to that stage uh, and they, you know, the Steven Gerrard's team, I, I can't say it, is Al, Etif, Al Etifak, if they are willing to put up the money, he will go. It's as simple as that. He will go because they're going to offer him astronomical money, life-changing money, and I'm not going to judge anyone that yeah. they would do that, especially at his stage of his career. So I'm a wee bit nervous about it, to be honest with you, because I, I think James Tavenu would be a massive blow. I know he has a, a lot of criticism, and I know there's a general feeling around him that he hasn't won enough, and I think the same, but I think the influence he still has on this Rangers team. I'm mm -hmm. hoping Michael Beal can remove some of that influence from him and it means that we can maybe get more out of others but right now as it stands you look at last season the season before he is massive for us so I really don't want to see James Tavernier move on at this stage I think he's still at an age that he can still deliver for us so mm -hmm. yeah for me that one's a, I'm a wee bit nervous about that one I won't lie I'd like to think it's just paper talk it's a bit of a lazy link because Gerard and Tavernier and things like that but I will be watching that one as for the other two See, to be honest with you, I, I don't think it matter, matters what club are in for Scott Wright or Glenn Kamara. If Rangers get a, what they consider a reasonable bid for either player, they'll go. Mm -hmm. um, they're both at the stage now that they've probably maxed out at Rangers. There's not really much more to offer. I mean, Glenn Kamara, is, he's, he's finished. He doesn't he doesn't want to be here. So Rangers will look for any avenue to move him on, him on this summer. So they too can go for me. But yeah, I'm pretty nervous about James Tavernier. and I'm hoping that one just... Um, gets put to bed pretty quickly if that means the club saying something him saying something i don't know but yeah, yeah i'm a wee bit nervous by that one kyle yeah a couple of comments in here about it robert robertson says tab has been great for us going forward defending not so much um rfc 72 says got sterling ready to go and give us funds for other areas that was where I, along the sort of lines that, that i was thinking again we, we see tab in the training video shug you know he's got he's got adam divine off clinging to his right hip practically um obviously we, we, we brought in Dujon Sterling from from Chelsea as well who we know can play that left back right back position um and and by all accounts is, is pretty decent in, in that right back position as well but I mean if, if silly money came in I mean obviously it would go but would you feel okay with the fact that we've probably got cover in that area no I'm, I'm nah. kind of worried or not I'm I've got the fear of what I lose to have yeah I think it's yeah, everybody will look and say squad X amount of goals and yeah, it's not very good defensively, but forget the amount of actual big moments that he's had in the range of shot. Yeah, times when he's actually picked us up and driven us toward through games and score important goals, not just goals, but important goals. I mm -hmm. uh, don't know who would take penalties. Uh, hopefully one of the new signings has got a decent penalty on them uh, because I think we were a bit short. If I remember rightly it was Morelos and then Barisic get moved on to penalties and I don't think either of them were too convincing. Right enough, one's gone but I don't think we've got a big depth of penalty takers as it stood uh, but dub has been reliable in that sense. Uh, it would take I think Ross is right what we value him at it's not what other clubs would pay for him. I think he'd be too big a loss for us and I don't think well, Sterling, I'm sure, would disagree, but I think that was a huge shot to come in and fill. I mean, Butland's got a big shot to fill, but for a guy like Sterling to come in and be expected to go up to the levels that Tav had and deliver the sort of numbers he's been delivering, yeah, I think if Sterling had been in the door last summer and we'd seen him during the season kind of thing, then it might have been easy to hand over, but it's a big... That's a big loss right now if Tav were to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'll happen because I think we'll value him too highly for anyone 
willing to pay it. But I mean, the hand and average players ten million pound a year, so you never know what they're gonna come out with. So can never totally rule it out, but yeah. I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, so I certainly think it's something to keep an eye on. And, and FYI, I think the next penalty taker, if obviously total hypothetical, if Tab was to go, I think it would be Dessers, to be honest with you. Watch his highlights. The boy just absolutely loves running up and, and smashing one right down the right in the back of the net. But speaking of, of Dessers, Ross, there's, there's a couple of deals that, that appeal to be rumbling on. Obviously, it was a couple of days ago, I think, Fabrizio Romano on a Twitter confirmed that... Um, Cyril, I've been. I've heard a few pronunciations of this. You, you is your our pronunciation expert, Ross? In this, is it Cyril or is it Cyril Dessers? Do you know? I I don't know. I, I I've I've seen I've seen pronunciations um, in terms of his first name and last name being different. I'm not. I'm actually not convinced it's Dessers. Okay. De 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 Desi, I've heard someone pronounce it as well. So, look. We need to get him in the door and we sit him down for an interview and ask him how to pronounce his, his name properly because, yeah, I do. It's something that bothers me badly, honestly. If I pronounce someone's name wrong, it really annoys me. So I'm actually going to just step back from that one and just be honest and say, I don't actually know the best that, way to pronounce his name at this point. <laughs> that's fair enough. I, I can see us having another season of that, of, of all these, you know, foreign signings that we're bringing in of mispronunciations left, right and centre with, with their names. But we will, we will do our best. Um, but obviously, that, that transfer seems to be rumbling on. You know, we've heard that, by all accounts, that there is a medical taking place, the player's keen to join. There's just a few wee things getting ironed out in the background. Um, hopefully, it will be getting announced today, tomorrow, at the weekend, this week. Um, but the other player that that's been, seems to have been going on for ages, like I even remember... Before we we stop for our for our break, we discussed uh, Jose Cifuentes um, at, at quite a length. But are you f getting frustrated, Ross, at, at how long these two deals seem to be taken? Given that we have been linked with both players for ages, or are you just quite happy with the way things are going and quite happy with the business so far? I think I'm probably quite happy about it about the business so far in terms of we've seen four or five players come in already, so. Every single transfer deal is different. Uh, the club have got to try and negotiate a fee with LAFC. It, it, we've all heard the, the rumours and the speculation that Rangers have agreed some sort of pre-contract with Jose Fuentes. Whether he signed that or not, I doubt it, because players usually don't do it unless they're absolutely guaranteed they're going to get the move at that point. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there's something in place between Rangers and Jose Fuentes and his, his agents and things like that. But the... the the stalling point must be with LAFC and they must be holding out for as much money as possible. Of course, Rangers are in the driving seat there. The longer this goes on, the less money LAFC gets. So they'll probably want to do a deal at some point. But I would imagine there's just a few things holding up. And Rangers have obviously, they've obviously spent quite a bit of money so far, four or five. I don't know, people will look at it and go, but the free transfers, but there's a lot of money that goes into bringing players in outside of a transfer fee. So yeah. Rangers might be looking at it in a way of, we maybe don't want to commit to everything right now. If if Serial Dessers is is going to be the next one to come in the door, that's a sizable fee. We've all seen the speculation routes around that. It's going to be at least four million, three and a half, four million. So that that's a big fee for Rangers. So it's maybe just they're trying to be a wee bit patient with this one. It is only July. It's the start of July. So there's plenty of time to go for this. I think as long as we've got Jose Cifuentes in. I, I'm starting to think he might not be here for the qualifiers. I think this might run on, but I think as long as he's in here for the start of the season, uh, I'll be happy with that. I'm, I've started to just accept now with transfer dealings that things just, each deal is different. Sometimes things can take longer than maybe others. So I'm not too bothered by it, Kale, to be honest. I think if you were looking at it, if, if this season was last season, if you remember, there was a lot of frustration with the Rangers fans because there was no business being done. I think Antonio Cholak was the first and he might have been was he made the, the end of July he came in? So I think the club have been really proactive this year. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to cut them a wee bit of slack here and, and I'm hoping they're just trying to get the best deal possible for, for Rangers. And they obviously have the, the guarantee from Jose Sofendez that, that he wants to be here. So yeah, I think we just need to be a wee bit patient, even though it can be a wee bit frustrating. Yeah, I think I think that's fair enough what, what you've said. I I, I think I, 
I certainly get a bit impatient. You're you're totally right. It is only the blinking start of July, and I'm like, why have we not signed these guys that we've been linked with for about two years? So, I, I mean, even going back to Butland, he was talking about there being rumblings for about two years before we actually made an official approach for him. But um, look, Shug, there's a couple of comments coming in here. Freddie Faulkner says we need to offload uh, to get more by the looks of it. I think that's a I think that's fair enough. I, I, Certainly true. We do need to get rid of people before we're bringing more in. Um, and RFC uh, 72 he had quite a funny comment here, so I brought it up. And I, I'm going to try and mention Doc Waller on every single pod I'm on from now until the end of the season. But he said now he's back. He's given them a thorough examination um, on the medicals now. Um, again, can you see us moving on to other targets if this doesn't happen soon? Ross has already kind of alluded to there that he might not perhaps be in for, for the European qualifiers, but but a guy like this, you know, if he is as is good as what he's rumoured to be, and, and by all accounts, I'm, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but this is the player I think I'm certainly most excited about joining us this window if he does join. Um, is it not really important that we have a guy like this in for, for the Champions League qualifiers? We would like to have them in for the Champions League qualifiers. I think that's every chance. I mean, there's still a month to go and he's already much fit. It's not as if he needs a pre-season done uh, since he's already in the mid-season. Uh, so I think that's every chance. But I do think that I am a bit concerned about the number of players that aren't moving out the door. I uh, don't know if we're waiting on them bids from Saudi, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's all well and good signing players, but all of a sudden, my squad size is going to be up to 35 or something, and it's no guarantees we're getting ready anybody. So, I think after uh, Big Dazzles and uh, Sefintas, I don't think we'll be bringing anybody else in until we do get rid of some. Uh, we don't want to be in a position where we're letting players go for nothing when we can get money for them. Uh, we're not that rich. I'm thinking back to the Martin Bain days when we used to have to mutually terminate contracts all the time because we can never fail anybody. Uh, but I, I would like to see players like Kamara move on, Scott Wright move on, John McLaughlin move on, uh, just to free up some room. Uh, I think, not sure if they spoke about it, but the club fly out to Germany, is it this weekend? I can't remember. But they fly out for a training nice. camp and Beale had said something about he was only taking a select squad with him, eh, which I guess will give us an idea of which players are in the plans and which aren't in the plans. Eh, I think most of the internationals return this week as well, at the end of this week. Big John Suter and Ryan Jack and stuff that were away with Scotland. Yeah. And Borna Marisic, no, I think they're back at the end of this week. Eh, I think only Raskin's got to wait till the following week so it'll be interesting to see this squad that goes to Germany uh, and yeah. I would be very surprised if Glenn Kamara's in amongst them uh, especially if the Sufuentes deal is close I think that's the only chance Kamara's got to stay in if there's something we are to go wrong with that uh, <laughs> then that might be the, the stop gap uh, but fingers crossed we'll all be good and the big man will be across Swapping govern and swap nearly for govern. What a move. <laughs> what, what a move. Same place, basically, isn't it? I think. And uh, I think it's a little bit colder in LA, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, certainly the last few weeks it might have been, by the way. And uh, also, what a tease you are, by the way, mentioning Glenn Kamara and staying in the same sentence. I almost saw Ross getting very excited about it. Yeah, fair, I did see Ross wailing up when he was talking about getting Glenn Kamara out the door. I could see the tears wailing up. So I've accepted that. I've accepted that. Yeah. Time to move on. Exactly. That's it. Ross, look, there's one last question I've, I've got um, about the kind of transfer rumours and all that stuff. I, I think we're all kind of fairly set in the fact that, that Dessers will be joining in the next couple of days and, and be signing it. But nothing's confirmed with Rangers until you're in uh, Ockenhowie with the with the blue scarf above your, your head and we all know that infamous photo that, that's taken down on the on the Rangers crest. Um but were you surprised to still see links that if we do get this guy that, that we were still linked with with being interested in Danilo because I was just expecting that chat to just be absolutely quashed. But there's quite a few big media outlets led with the fact that we were still 
the Dessers deal was well along the line, nearly tied up, and the, the Danilo thing, it was another strike that we were planning and bringing in. I don't think I'm surprised uh, based on the profile of the player and what we're looking for, because I, st- I still do think we probably need another number nine or someone that can play up there, especially if Michael Beale's going to move to that kind of uh, number 10 behind two kind of central strikers. I'm not really sure how he plans to use it. I suppose it's going to be dynamic. So I, was a- I wasn't surprised so much with that. What I was surprised about was the fees involved, the fees quoted. You know, if you're looking at three and a half, four million for Dessers and Feyenoord are looking for around the same or if not more, that's a big outlay from Rangers, especially in the, at the point where they've not moved anyone on yet. So yeah. I think for the player himself, Danilo, that is a player I would like to see Rangers move for. Uh, looks really instinctive. Looks really, really presses really, really well when he gets his opportunities, he takes them. And I think, listen, we've been through a season there where we just really struggled to put the ball in the back of the net at points, thinking how many opportunities were missed in really important games. And I, I think we're crying out for players like that. And I think Michael Beale recognises we need that. I think we have enough creativity behind the strikers now that he's really just looking to go out there and get guys that can put the ball in the back of the net. So for me, yeah, if it's Dessers. Uh, Danilo, hopefully the fees involved makes me think that one is unlikely. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't mean to, to dampen the spirits here, but I'm not convinced that one will go through just because of the money. Uh, and then Antonio Cholak, if that's your three, and then you've got someone like Sam Lammers who can potentially play up there, Fashion Zikala. I think we I think we do have enough in that area now. Yeah. So, yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see. I think the interesting one for me is Sam Lammers, right? Because I think when he was quoted as being signed and he was being signed as a, as a number nine. Um, but everything you've heard from him so far is he doesn't really see himself as just a, a number nine that stays within the, the width of the, the, the posts. He wants to be involved. He drops in. Mm-hmm. So I think, again, that's a player that suits Michael Beale, but I don't think he's going to be one of the, the guys that's going to stay on the last line, for example. He's maybe going to play next to Cantwell and things like that. So yeah. because of that change, the dynamic there and the profile of player that he is, I think it means we need another striker. So, listen, if the club want to really push the boat out and they want to spend that kind of money on Danilo, I'm all for it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's unlikely that we'll do that. Yeah, Shagar FC72 here says, still mad on a free out there as well. I think that's become a bit more clear that, that, that Bordeaux have got to pay, uh, pay a lot of money to to, to get back into Liga. Um, and, and by all accounts, Maja's contract, he is, he is a free agent. Is this somebody that you can... I mean, Ross has put a bit of dampener on me because I, after watching the Danilo videos, I, I really, really like the guy and think that he would be a good fit, especially if we are maybe going for that sort of two up top and and, and having Lammers and uh, Seaman and around that that as well. But um, is Magi a guy that you think that we should be be looking at? Um, and would you be happy if he he came to Rangers? I think we'll definitely look at him. I mean, we've been well aware of him just in the general range of support. Uh, we've been aware of him for years now. Yeah. Another one that seems to be linked forever. Uh, so the club and Ross Wilson and all that have been more than aware of him. Uh, I do find it interesting that we've not been like heavily linked with him because he is on a free and you'd think that's that's the best price to pay, uh, which yeah. makes me think that the club maybe aren't as keen on him uh, for whatever reason. He was somebody I thought would come in and do a job, uh, but it doesn't look like the club. I heard, did hear something that he wants to go back to England. Uh, I guess that's where the money is for him. If he wants to, I mean, he had to have his wage at Bordeaux last year. I think he was only on 25 grand a week or something, so he's maybe struggling a wee bit after last season. <laughs> uh, can't afford to uh, go on that sort of wage again at Rangers. He uh, mm. needs to top it up somewhere. But yeah, um, again, I'm with Rose, and I don't think we really need another striker. I'd like another striker, but we don't really need another mm. striker right now unless somebody goes up, out the door. I mean, because I was thinking back to this time mm. last year, and when Cholak came in, but Morelos was injured mm. and wasn't back, and Roof was forever injured, whereas we seem to be in a better position already this year in terms of going into the season uh, with Cholak already in the door in, in pre-season and Roof uh, I'm, I'm scared to say fit uh, <laughs> Roof 
Roof's got hair and he's uh, not got any plaster or anything on, so that's mm -hmm. probably as good as Roof's ever looked at Rangers. Uh, well, since 55 season. Mm -hmm. But we've got him and then Lamas can play up there, so Carla can play up there. Uh, we've got players, so I think it's as I was saying before, I think they'll want players out before we desperately need to get somebody in. I think if somebody comes in for Cholak, then it's something you activate. But yeah. uh, I don't know if it was a case of going back to final and saying, look, we've got Dezos. He has the three and a half million. If you don't take it, we're away because we've already got somebody. That kind yeah. of thing. Almost like try to force their hand, saying, well, if you don't take it, we're off. But <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't see his spending money. Yeah, on somebody that would he's not not necessarily going to be first 11 yeah because yeah. i think we've got enough to fill the 11 now apart from we need well we los angeles ecuadorian across <laughs> and then we're 11 i'll be looking good i know there there's your headline right there this is ibrook's podcaster picks roof and sakala over brazilian striker so if anybody's looking out there for a quote, that's it right there. Um, Ross, I'll, I'll come to you on, on this uh, next few point here because I'm, I'm quite keen to talk about this. I think everybody knows that I always get so caught up in training videos and even like see the warm ups before games. Every single game, and Craig will attest to this, I will be like, their keeper looks like his head, but it often doesn't mean a lot. But I'm going to ask you this anyway, because I know it's been a topic in the, the infamous This Is Ibrooks WhatsApp chat, and, and we've been talking about it a lot. What, Who's impressed you in training? Um, and obviously, because I know you've been watching the videos and stuff like that, has anybody stood out to you or, or anything like that? Or are you just, I'm not reading too much into it and not, not in the same hype train as you are, Kyle? No, I'm, I'm fully convinced we're in the treble next year and <laughs> the Champions League after watching those training videos. Yeah. Uh, of course, just joking. Um yeah, I mean, I've watched them like you. Uh, again, I probably, I probably sound such a, I'm damping on everything, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of the the training videos are kind of the same as the preseason friendlies for me. I don't, I try not look into it too much, right? But of mm -hmm. course, it's it's really good to see the a lot of the new signings fitting in quickly. Um, yep. I think it was good to see like uh, Abdallah Sima involved in training already because he was only announced last week. So I don't know if that that's been him that's been pushing for that to come in and just join preseason straight away. I, I, I thought he'd be a wee bit, wee bit of a delay in him, maybe just moving up the road, things like that. So that's really good to see. Um, Sam Lammers looks really tidy on the ball. I think the main one is, all, is always going to be Todd Cantwell. I mean, every time you watch this guy in yeah. training, he just, he just glides by everyone. I think there was one the other day where he played the ball, a pass with the outside of his foot, and it was just yep. perfect. And he's just like, this guy is... He's just, he's just so good to watch, regardless of whether it's in a game or at training. So, yeah, that's an app. I'm, I'm even getting caught up there talking about it. I try not get caught up too much in it. Um, but no, it's, re it's really good to see. Uh, it looks like the squad are in really good spirits. Uh, it looks like they're all focused and ready to go. And you've heard a lot of them talk about Michael Beale and how important he was in terms of new signings coming to the club and things like that. So he's clearly creating a really good environment at the training ground. And that's where you need to be successful. So look, yeah, that was there. Um, yesterday, you can feel it. It, it. It's good. There's a lot of positivity around and... Yeah, I'm enjoying watching the training videos. I'll just try and not get too hung up on them. If, for example, someone plays a bad pass, I'm not going to rule them out for the season. That's what I'm <laughs> trying. That's what I'm trying to not do when I watch these things. Yeah, and if we've found Ross's alternative account that he uses. Here's Hugo Bear with a comment: Todd Cantwell is a superstar. But I'm saying that though. I Couldn't think I agree more. Yeah, most of the this is Ibrox time uh, team can can certainly get behind this. Um, Shugga, something that I picked up in the training videos, and again, I know it was discussed in the in the this is Ibrox WhatsApp chat. Um, there was a lot of shouts towards a a particular Alec Lowry in in this. I'm, I'm keen to get your thoughts on because I've seen a lot of comments saying that we need to sign another central midfielder. I think he perhaps not not box to box, but certainly more forward thinking. But that is the position he occupies. There was lot, as I said, there was lots of shouts towards him of, of, of keep it simple, an awful lot. Do you see him having a, a, a future at Rangers? Um, obviously, we know the circumstances, that, or the unfortunate circumstances that he had last season um, with, with his mum and stuff like that. But do you see him having a future at Rangers and in, in, in and around the squad this year? Because if I felt like we said it last year, if there was a year that he was going to break through, it would have been last year. But you know, maybe excuse him. Do you think this is his year? No. 
I don't. I don't. <laughs> Wait, move on to the next question. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, just the players that we're bringing in seem to be sort of broken that pathway through to the first team for them. Uh, so I said earlier, Sam Lamos is he's more a ten than a nine. So that's somebody else that's going to be in playing. I guess we did lose Tillman and we have lost uh, Kent, but like if Cadwell, Dowell, I think these players will all play in them roles behind the striker, which I think is probably the one that suits Lowry the most. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what the plan would be because he's got to get games. I think Leon King's in a similar boat. They both really could do with getting game time. Yeah. Uh, not just be hanging around to be well, it used to be the fifth man a lot and never got on the bench, but they could really do with getting games in. So it'll be interesting come the end of August where we're sitting and what players we've brought in to see what happens for Alex Lowry. We all want him to make it. I would love it. I'd love to sit here this time next year and say I was wrong. He's absolutely blown the season away. Uh, mm-hmm. I think having a guy like Todd Cantwell in there, he can learn a lot from him. Uh, but I just don't see I don't see a position for him in the first eleven. Yeah, I think even if you go to your reserve eleven, I think he struggles to even get into that just now. So we're possibly a couple of more players to come in. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's he's maybe going to be kept. It's maybe going to be the one that's likely on King and that are going to get Armstrong by the fact that we've not got trained uh, Rangers trained players for the European squad and things. Uh, and they are easy to fill up, uh, which um, hampers their their own career. But mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think I don't think Lowry's going to make it this season. I hope he does, but I can't see it. Yeah, so that it'll be interesting. I think, as you said, it's quite a, a diluted and, 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 and full squad at the moment. So we will see. I mean, you always want Rangers youngsters to to do well, and and uh, and I'm sure we'll see him a, a, a few times this season. But you're right. I think we're buying players for for the here and now rather than rather than project players. Um, Ross, I've just got one final question for you. Um, I know you talked talked to him yesterday. Don't want to go in and, and give anything away that was revealed in the interview. What what are the press conference just to say with with Kieran Dowell but he's been a guy that, that that's really 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 impressed me in training you can see him being quite a leader I would say at times you know he, he's been full-blooded in the challenges seems to have been linking up well another guy who again surprised me uh, in terms of appeared to be you know taking a bit of a leadership role on the training ground was was Todd Cantwell it's another another string in his bow you know um what what What's your thoughts on on Kieran Dow and 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 okay, I can't know I've not seen him play, but from the small, very very small snippets that we've seen, have you been impressed? And like me, do you think he's going to be a bit of a dark horse this season? Yeah, well, first of all, on Todd Campbell there, when you were talking about the kind of leadership things, that that was something that I spotted last year in the our last seasons, the last old firm at Ibrox, was he really took a he was a real leader that day. You know, he was directing Sakala and Matondo where they need to be. You know, he was pressing as hard as possible, putting challenges in. That was a guy that was wanting to lead from the front. And he was wanting to do it with his football and ability. It wasn't about screaming and shouting at people. So mm. I, I totally agree with you there. I've seen that last season. And I think he will be a leader for this team this year, which is, again, something that I feel like all I do in this podcast these days is talk about Todd Cantwell and how good he is. But <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> I think I think it's something we didn't expect from him. And there's been a lot of things like that. So I, I, the club have clearly done their homework properly on Todd Campbell. They've seen a lot of kind of desirable traits within him and, and they've brought him in. So yeah, that, that's something I just wanted to highlight there because I think you're right. As for Kieran Dill, the way I kind of feel about Kieran Dill was the way I felt about Tom Lawrence last year. Now he's came in with no real no real reputation in Scotland. There's not a, there's not a big transfer fee. Mm-hmm. People will have known of him because of the links a couple of years ago under Steven Gerrard which is actually something that uh, I would love to ask him at one point whether those links were true, because obviously Jack Butland spoke about that yesterday, so it would be good to hear whether uh, Kieran Dill was ever close to a move a couple of years ago. But that's the feeling I get from Kieran Dill. I really feel like it's a guy that wants to be one of the creative forces in the team, and I agree with you completely on his kind of physical stature, and I would say that about all the players we've brought in this year. They are all big 
like really physical players and I think Michael Beals recognises and we needed a wee bit more of that throughout the squad and he certainly has that so I think Kieran Dill will be a really good signing for us and I actually think he'll play more than people expect it was exactly the same thing I said about Tom Lawrence last year and you've seen that before he got his really bad injury he was really starting to push himself and he was becoming one of the main guys you, you look at that game away at Hibs he was arguably our best player that day of course we didn't get the result but yeah I'm looking at Kieran Dill as someone that can can really come in and really make an impact in this Rangers team. And I think it's great for him that he doesn't have a big transfer fee surrounding him and he can just come in. And, and in a way, people aren't really expecting a lot from him, but he could come in, really grab it uh, and really force himself into that team. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing Kieran Dill. I think he's got what it takes to play for Rangers after hearing uh, everything he had to say yesterday. Yeah, total agreement with you there, Saddam. I, I said, I'm really looking forward to seeing him in a, in a shot now. The fact that we've... I think out of, as you said, out of all the players that have arrived so far, he's maybe been one of them that's had the sort of least fanfare, if, if, if you know what I mean. He's not he's not come with a big reputation, but just some of the touches that I've seen in training, again, there was a... God, I feel like I'm picking an Alec Lowry in this podcast. It's absolutely not my intention, but there was a, there was a full-blooded, very physical challenge that, you know... You, you would maybe see in training videos of of days gone by, but I, I love to see it, and I think I always I, I, I love left footed players as well. To be honest with you, and the fact that he's he's you know got a really good left foot as well. So um, look, I think that just about wraps it up for that. Says it the hour mark. On you go. Sorry, just just a quick one, just before you wrap things up. See the Alex Lowry. Um, I know the the tackle you're talking about there. Yeah, and I know the way that looks sometimes, and and I don't I actually done it myself initially. When I seen that, I was like, oh, that doesn't look great for Lowry. But actually, I think it's a real positive for him to be surrounded by guys like this. You know, the, with the big, you know, big physical statures and in training, it's it's ex exactly the same as a match day. It's all about doing your best and, and trying to compete for that shirt. I think this will really help him. Genuinely, I, I really do think it will potentially take him to another level. Of course, if he recognises that he needs to up his game to compete with these guys, I think it will be really good. And I'm actually really glad to see Kieran Dill just flying into things, not caring. Yeah. And, and you always hear about, you know, young players coming through at football clubs. And I always, I always remember listening to an interview from Wayne Rooney when he was coming through at Everton. And he basically went into training and, and was like, I'm the best here. I'm the best player here. And I'll show yeah. everyone that. And yeah. he was like 16, right? Now I know Alex Lowry and Wayne Rooney, there's a bit, a bit of a difference there, right? But in terms of you need to have that attitude to break through at a big club like Rangers. So hopefully he takes that kind of clip um, that you've seen with the training videos. Maybe he looks back at that himself and he goes, I'm going to put that in there. Well, I'm going to show them tomorrow. You know, I want to get something in that training footage that makes me look great. So look, yeah. I think it's a really positive thing and, and hopefully Alex Lowry can really use that and, and kick on this year. Yeah, I, I agreed to that point as well. I think we've been lacking that somewhat just a, a player that just shows a total lack of respect for for who he's up against and doesn't care and is is going to go in full blooded but yeah i think that's a very very fair point and, and a good point to, to end the podcast on there ross but um chug listen thanks for joining us again uh, i know you've been stuck with me for the for the second wednesday in a, a, in a row we might make it three next wednesday but um th thanks for that i know i always enjoy talking about angels and yeah it's one week closer to the new season so can't wait. That's it. I think until we're on that ugh, horrible, horrible AstroTurf away at Command, I think that's when when that that'll be. I'll be glad when you you've stopped saying that because you know the the season's underway. And Ross, thanks to you and, and sharing your insight about uh, a fantastic day for for this is Ibrox at, at Auckland Howie yesterday. Yep, thanks, mate. Um, it's a pleasure to be back. It's uh, I'm hoping it's another great season for for us and uh, the team, the Rangers team. So, yep, thanks for having me back, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to this season. Yes, thank you. And thank you, most importantly, to everybody that's commented and got involved, watched, listened. Um, and as always, again, really, really good to see loads of new faces, new comments in that, that comment section for, for the new season. We hope you stick with us. Um, remember, if you haven't already, give us a like, subscribe, uh, tell your pals about it. Um, but take care, guys, and we will see you on Sunday. Uh, I'm not sure who's hosting the 8pm the show, but we'll be back on Sunday with more Rangers content and maybe perhaps a signing or two to talk about. Take care and we'll see everybody then.